Views expressed by Casters Guild members are only the opinions of that member, and that could change from day to day. Guild members may use mature language, but that in no way means they are mature. Listener discretion is advised. From Lord of the Rings to X-Wings, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they like above all else, and that is correcting people. That's the spell we're casting tonight on Casters Guild. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Casters Guild, where we will once again be playing a game of Um Actually. We have some new contesting joining us. First up, we have Billy. Hello, this is Billy. You can find me all over the place at Six Sad Billy. That's all I got. And joining us once again is TJ. Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is TJ. You can find me at Night of Shaddai uh, on uh, the YouTubes. And you know him. You love him. Our undefeated reigning champion... Guildmaster Baron. And I'm hanging on by a thread. <laughs> a prayer. <laughs> and joining us once again, just that, right? and joining us once again, just to make sure the game is fair, is our judge and point keeper, Tiffany. Hi, I'm oh, going yeah. I'm gonna be the tally person tonight and and the official fact checker. So if you, you give uh, me a correction and I tell you your incorrection is correct. You can just look over at Tiffany and be like, hey, Google that shit. I bet I'm right. And we'll have Tiffany decide if you are more correct than my card. <laughs> does that count for extra points? It, it doesn't. But if I say you don't get the point, then Tiffany's correction could mean that you do get the point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, point actually, I'm Good, actually yeah. as notorious about their one rule of you only get one point no matter what. Like, it okay. doesn't matter. Also, technically correct is, again, the best kind of correct. So I have in my hand a stack of incorrect statements. Your job will be to buzz in at any point in time. You can interrupt me at any time, just like you can in real life. You will say, um, actually, and then correct the statement. If you correct the statement correctly, you'll get a point. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the game will win. Do we have any questions? No, let's go. Do this. All right, with that, we're going to go ahead and get into our first question, which is pertaining to cartoons. In the 2005 TV series Avatar The Last Bear Airbender, the original firebenders were dragons who taught the ancient precursors to the Fire Nation, the Sun Warriors, how to use firebending properly. Unfortunately, Zuko's great-grandfather, Sozin, started a tradition of hunting dragons, and they were driven to extinction by the Fire Nation. TJ. Uh, actually, they weren't driven to extinction. Iroh actually like kept them secret and uh, didn't tell anybody. And they got actually discovered in the later series because uh, Zuko forgot how to do firebending right because he got rid of all the hatred in his heart. That is correct. Uh, two dragons are still alive in the ancient Sun Warrior village, uh, Ran and Shaw. That's point wow. for TJ. Yep. I love Avatar. That was an easy softball for me. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you got a softball there, because I looked at this. I had no idea. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a question for modern TV series. In the 2013 TV series Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Terry Jeffords is very protective of his fellow officers and frequently expresses his love for his twin daughters, Carter and Lee, as well as his favorite food, yogurt. Unfortunately, hey, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. Yeah, I'm, I was buzzing too. Okay, hold on. Okay. I'm going to start that question <laughs> over. Start. I, I forgot to clear the buzzers. <sighs> That's on me. Starting the question over. One point away from Rick. <laughs> you know what? No, go ahead, Billy. Go ahead. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to start the question over. No, no, no. No, no, no. Go ahead, Billy. You're not getting an excuse for getting destroyed today. <laughs> huh? Said so you're not getting an excuse for getting destroyed today. Oh, I gave okay. Billy a point. Yeah. All right, we'll go, do this again. Okay. You know what? Go ahead. Because you guys all interrupted me. Go ahead. Go ahead, Baron. Uh, um, <laughs> actually, his daughters are Cagney and Lacey. That is correct. Terry's daughters are named Cagney and Lacey. Now clear them buzzes. <laughs> I just did. I just did. Sorry, listeners at home, for not giving a fair game. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it is. I see what I got myself into. <laughs> That's probably like my favorite 
TV series right now, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, that's a that, good choice. Me, me, and uh, or Billy and I are huge fans of it as well. Yes, I'm we are. sure he knew the answer to it. Where can you watch it? Hulu. Where, where is it streaming right now? It was it was Hulu at one what? point in time, I believe, but I think it's been moved. But but I I would actually fully recommend pirating it. <laughs> okay, I wasn't going to say it, that because I don't know the rules oh. here. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I we we here at the Casters Guild support pirates and um, especially against struck companies. Oh, oh so like that's pretty much company. everybody at this point. Yeah, Peacock yeah. is the current say, streaming service it, that it is on. You got to check like though. Peacock. It started off. It started on Fox and then it it ended on NBC. So mm-hmm. it could be somewhere in between the two. Okay, there's always YouTube. Those yeah, NBC yeah. episodes Ultimate aren't pretty good. <laughs> yeah, YouTube works. All right, our next question is concerning video games. In the 1997 video game series Fallout, vaults were designed as shelters in which U.S. citizens could take refuge in case of nuclear war. Unfortunately, poor management and funding cutbacks led to the failure of many vaults. For example, one vault was overstocked with weapons and ammunition, while another vault's door failed to close properly, allowing radiation inside. TJ. Um, I'm going to take a stab because I'm not 100% sure. Um, actually, none of the vault doors malfunctions because I remember in the games, I don't remember there being a door I didn't have to open off the top of my head. It doesn't say that one malfunction. It just says it failed to close properly, which doesn't necessarily mean a malfunction. As in the game, it was intentional that the door didn't close properly, but that is not what's incorrect with the statement. Baron, you were the next to buzz in? Um, actually... It was done on purpose. That is correct. The vaults didn't fail due to poor management and funding funding cutbacks. Most of the vaults were designed as experiments with citizens yeah, I, as test subjects. That was going to be my fault. What I, my second thought was, I thought it was because the doors actually were, were did remain closed. But I was like, I remember the, going the, to some vaults that actually were like experiments gone wrong in there, and that was the, the one majority that, of the vaults. The were one that experiments didn't, the gone one that wrong. Didn't, the one that didn't close all the way was Fallout uh, New Vegas. Okay. I played that one, too, but it's been a long time. Yeah, That's back I, in the I, uh, Xbox 360 it, days. Yeah, it's like a whole vault of, like, ghouls. Ghouls, yeah, because they got affected by the My question, I have an important question. The very first sentence you said that Fallout came out what year? 1997. <laughs> Might be. I mean, uh, Fallout 1, was that a PC only? It was, and it was like so, a yeah. top-down, isometric-style game full of Simpsons references. <laughs> Very different. My, my my Virgin Fallout experience was Fallout 3 uh, for the 3. Yeah. yeah. A lot okay. of people's <laughs> first Fallout was Fallout 3. I don't even think it was Bethesda back when it was Fallout 1 and 2. I don't remember. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they did change a lot between 1 and 2. I mean, 2 and 3. All right, so that's going to bring us to our first shiny question of the game. Shiny Ooh, questions, shiny. just like shiny Pokemon, are worth the same amount of points. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. Do I have so to do I'm an going... excellent throw? That's what I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the names of four Futurama characters. The first person to buzz in and give me the family name of all four characters will get the point. Do we all understand? Is everybody ready? Say it one more time. I'm going to give you the names of four Futurama characters. The first person to buzz in and give me the family name of all four characters will get the point. Oh, okay. I think I understand. Yes. All right. So the four characters are Leela, Fry, Bender, and Hermes. Family name between them? Not together. You have to give me all four family names. Oh, oh, okay. I misunderstood. Like, my name is Rick, but my family name is Perry. Yeah, I gotcha. I got that part. I, did, I thought they all had to have, like, say, have the same last name. So, my bad. If nobody oh knows all four, oh, I will give the point to whoever can name the most. Bender has the last name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and a middle name. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I think you found this. You found the hole. All right, Baron. Okay. Leela, this is just... Leela's family name? Leela, I'm, I'm going to say Leela doesn't have a family name. Leela does have a family that's name, just, but that's okay. Oh, okay. Fry's family name? Farnsworth? It is not. 
That is incorrect. Okay. I couldn't. I knew it wasn't. But Bender's family name? Rodriguez. It is Rodriguez and Hermes' family name. Conrad. It is Conrad. So since you were the only one to attempt, two is more than anybody else got. So you will get the point for that shiny question. Leela's family name is Taranga. God damn it. And Fry's family name is Fry. His first name is Philip. Yeah. Okay. Philip J. Fry. Fuck. Oh, God damn it. That's right. I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> I, I have never seen an episode of Futurama in its entirety. But congratulations oh, on getting Bender bending Rodriguez. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I did not know he had a last name. That's really cool. <laughs> did they reveal Leela's last name in that episode where she discovered who her parents were in the sewers? I, I'm pretty. Yes. No, I'm pretty sure she had that. I'm I'm pretty sure she had that last name first oh, episode. Oh, yeah, that's true. That was episode yeah? one, Tarango Leela, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. All right, our next question is going to be a fantasy question. In the 1954 book series... Wait, 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 wait. Do you want to check your buzzes? <laughs> in Are you the, buzzed or buzzed? <laughs> in the 1954 book series, Lord of the Rings, Sauron convinced Elvin Smiths to craft 19 rings of power then secretly forged one ring so he could dominate those who wore them. However, PJ. Um, actually, they didn't create 19 rings. Yes, they did. Dang. I thought they only crafted maybe a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Going back into it. However, by the time Frodo obtains the one ring, all the other rings have been lost or destroyed, except the nine... Baron. Um, actually, the elven rings are still around galadriel has one gandalf has one and i believe elrond has one that is correct I know about galadriel's but i didn't realize the other two you never see him in the movies i don't think do you yep you do and oh you the, do uh, okay there's also the nine that were given to mortal men that corrupted them into ring yeah. race that are still around but that was part of the question so yeah I, I i wasn't sure if the ring wraith rings were still uh were still around i but the dwarven ones are gone though right yeah mm-hmm the only ones that are around are the ring wraiths rings and the elven rings. Our next question concerns <laughs> mythology. <laughs> Our next question concerns mythology. I just keep doing that to you, Baron. Don't. <laughs> Jesus. I'm trying Christ. to let I'm trying to let somebody else get some points. Okay. No, I get it. I get it. But you screwed over Billy that one time. <laughs> All right. The next question concerns mythology. You could make a small pantheon just out of the gods related to drinking. Most people know the Greek god Dionysus, but there's also the Aztec twins known as Sensen Totutin and the Egyptian goddess Nephthys. No idea. Let me break really? out my papyrus scrolls. <laughs> um, actually, the Egyptian god Nephthys is not the Egyptian goddess of wine. But I don't know who they are. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if she's the Egyptian goddess of wine, but she is the Egyptian no, goddess no. of, of, no, of no, no. some sort of drink or alcohol, which is what I said. Oh, okay. So okay. related okay. to drinking. Sorry. <laughs> so Baron. that's okay. I just wanted to. The... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was about, I was about to say he, that's not what he said, but it is what he said. Yeah. Baron? Nope. That's exactly what I was about to. That's a, I was going to say the exact same thing as Billy. Okay. All right. Are we going to give up on this one? Yeah. If you ask me a Greek guy question, I might say more of a chance. Sensen Tot Totuktin, the Aztec gods are not are not twins. Instead, they are uh. a group of four hundred divine rabbits who meet for drunken parties. That's awesome. Oh, I want to see the right. picture of that. <laughs> Our next question is concerning anime. In the nineteen eighty nine anime Dragon Ball Z, despite its name. Dragon Ball Z doesn't focus too heavily on the actual Dragon Balls, and the dragons are rarely summoned. Each dragon will grant up to three wishes. Baron? Um, actually, there's only one dragon. Uh, that is incorrect. TJ, you were next <laughs> buzzing. <laughs> what? Um, in Dragon Ball Z, uh, there's actually two dragons, and only one of them grants three wishes. The other one grants one. Oh. That is correct. There's a, is it a dark dark dragon? No, eat Dark Dragon is GT. Planets. Yeah, the Dark Dragon is GT. And Dragon oh, the Ball Namekian Z, one? Oh, the my Namekian God. dragon. Yep. They were so surprised when they went to Namek, where they were just like, three wishes. What do we do with all these wishes? We only really needed one. I, I think up to this moment, I thought they were the same dragon. Nope. And they look very just different. Thumbing, 
that was that <laughs> was the whole Dude, uh, the whole plot with the Frieza arc is that Piccolo died and Kami went with him, and now they didn't have any more Earth Dragon Balls, so they actually had to fly to Namek to go find the original Dragon oh. Balls where it came from. So weird. The Namekian so dragon weird. is also super jacked. Oh yeah, super jacked. He is, but still he's not he's the biggest dragon in the whole Dragon Ball Z series. Oh, the no. whole Dragon Balls series. That would be like the super of dragon of the super dragon yeah. balls. Yeah. Oh, yep. good lord, he is jacked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he looks very <laughs> different from Shenron. Yeah. Or Shenron, miss arm depending on which translation you're looking I say, at. I say he didn't miss leg day, but he has no legs, so it's got to be all about the arm day. <laughs> True. All right, and that will bring us to our next shiny question. This one is a spelling bee, so I'm going to give you a word from Dungeons and Dragons. God. <laughs> you will then get a chance to buzz in and spell the word. The first person to spell the word correctly will get the point. Your word is Remoraz. Billy, you were first. I have to do it spelling bee style? Uh, I need it in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> you can, sure. Okay. What is the word again? Remoraz. Remoraz. How do you spell that? The, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the, the question. question. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Remoraz. Um, R-E-M-O-R-A-Z-Z. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The next person to buzz in was TJ. All right, I will try. Remoraz. I cast Remoraz on his ass. Um, <laughs> R-E-M-E-R. Remoraz. A Z Z. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Oh well, that does have a Z Z five, doesn't it? It Barry. does. Right? I mean, it's got that Z at the end of it. You just want to over consonant it. Baron, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be wrong too. But R H E M O R A Z. That is incorrect. So nobody's gonna get the point for this one. The correct spelling Two Z's. for Remoraz. Two Z's. Is R E M O R H A Z. I knew Holy there was shit, an H in there. Yeah, you you had it right, correct. So, you just put the H in the wrong place. So Rick, I want to know what it's from. Like, use it in a sentence. So uh, a monster, isn't it? Yeah, it's a giant worm-like monster, centipede-like monster that is. I think they're. In the snow, too. I think they're ice monsters. They can be, yeah. Something. Absolutely. They, they, there have been ice giant versus Remoraz battles. That sounds terrifying. Oh, yeah. Awesome. It, it is. It is a ter- I have a miniature of it somewhere. When are we going to fight it? <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany's shaking her head like, yeah, I'm not going to be a part of that. <laughs> so our next question is concerning comics. Despite being a villain... Dr. Doom has done some good in his life. He used his powers to liberate the small European country of Latveria. Billy? Um, Actually, Dr. Doom doesn't have powers. Uh, It depends on who you ask, but uh, that is not the correction that we are looking for here, because in some cases he does have powers. Baron? Um, Actually, Dr. Doom conquered Latveria. That's not exactly okay. the wording we were looking for, but that's that's pretty much... You know what? You have spotted what's incorrect, but okay. unless you can be more correct or someone else can be more correct, you will get the point. Say it again. Yeah, why don't we read the Please. whole question this time? Despite being a villain, Dr. Doom has done some good in his life. He used his powers to liberate the small European country of Latveria, went to hell to save his mother's soul, and even took over for Iron Man for a while. Huh. Baron? Um, actually, he didn't take over Latveria for good. He was taking it for his own designs. That, that really wasn't what we were looking for either, but I'm going to give you the point because you're sitting here dancing around what we're looking for. All we were looking for <laughs> is that he is the dictator of Latveria. I mean, oh. Oh. so, I mean, you kind of got it right off the bat. It was just a wording thing, which, you know, technically correct and all that. <laughs> yes. Dr. Was it Doom a free country? Know. Was it a free country what? before Dr. Doom took it over? I think so. Okay. So, yeah, he's pretty upright on, on the mark. He conquered it and yeah. made himself the, the emperor of you it. You can conquer a country without becoming dictator. a dictator. So, like, it's... 
It was one of those things where you just to go a little bit further, play. but yeah, we, you're going to get that point anyway. So yeah, Tiffany get Baron gets the point for that question. So our next question is concerning video games. In the 1999 ready. video game Street Fighter III Third Strike, parrying allows a fighter to avoid damage, but it requires split-second timing. The ability made a big splash in the 2004 EVO Championship when Daigo <laughs> Umera parried three consecutive... Baron? Um, actually, parrying doesn't stop all damage. Actually, it does. Cool. Go ahead and finish. The ability made a big difference in the 2004 EVO Championship when Daigo Umahara parried three consecutive combo hits in a row and snagged a victory. TJ? Um, actually, it wasn't three. It was more than that. Uh, that is correct. Um, you're going to get the point either way, but could you tell me how many hits in a row that he parried? No, I can't. I just gave you a vague enough answer to get the point. <laughs> 17? I'm sorry? Well, this, this would be, yeah, this... What was your guess? This would be the point to where you would say, this would be the point where you say, if someone can answer correctly exactly how many, then they would get the point. Well, the way the card is written, that like, if you can just say he didn't parry three hits, that gets you the point. Oh, okay. So, cool. But uh, he parried. Technicality. The best (laughs) technicality. He parried all 15 hits of his opponent's super art move, plus a midair kick and then launched his own 12-hit combo and super art move to win the match. That's awesome. Who said 17? I Billy. Did. Oh, nice. That was fucking cl- close. Well, actually, because he, he he countered 15 and then a mid-air shot. That's, Which would be that's 16. 16. Yeah, so yeah. it's close. God damn. I've seen that clip about a thousand times. It's an amazing oh, clip. It's an amazing it piece is. of gaming history. And for you wrestling fans out there, somebody actually recreated that clip with CM Punk and Tony Khan doing the Daigo. It's called the Daigo clip. And to seek it out, it's pretty entertaining. Freaking awesome. Our next question concerns the 80s and 90s. In the 1987 TV series, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, when the BBC imported the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon into the UK, censors demanded changes. They replaced Ninja in the title with Hero and removed many scenes showing weapons being used. By the third season, Raphael Sai had been replaced by batons, and Michelangelo's nunchucks had been replaced by a grappling hook called the Turtle Line. That's all pretty lame. <laughs> yeah. TJ. Because, I mean, at least some of that has to be true. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know all of that. The fact but that any of it's true is really lame. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> they WB kids it, so. Um, <sighs> even worse, how in the world do you censor, like, the weapons are everywhere. Anyway, getting to my answer. Um, uh, actually, Michelangelo's weapon wasn't called that? No, actually, that that is one of the true parts, is Michelangelo's nunchucks got replaced with a grappling hook called the turtle line. Okay. Well, and that so. actually happened, just, just to be clear, the changes in the third season happened in both the American and the UK version because they changed it for both. So you can actually mm. see Michelangelo using the turtle line in the American version. But to be fair, they had kind of not been using their weapons most of the time anyway, not to actually hit enemies. And all the foot ninjas had been replaced by robots. So they yeah, I remember that anyway. Yeah, because I, I remember like in the first episodes or uh, what have you, they were like attacking the Foot Clan and they're just like, they're robots, robots, let's rock. And they just throw off all of their uh, disguises and just go full on into it. Baron? Um, actually, they didn't change uh, Raphael's size into batons. That is correct. For some reason, they only considered nunchucks offensive enough to be replaced and the size were fine. I wonder why. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> but also, it would have been dumb for them to change them put to batons, which are arguably nunchucks without the chain in between them. Yes. <laughs> and I also, only look at it. I, I mean, this might be why they didn't change them, but batons would be a much easier weapon for children to replicate than size. Mm. Like, you just pick up two sticks and, and beat your neighbor with them while size are a little harder to find. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, Donatello had a bow staff, so any <laughs> stick you found out in the wild, hey, I'm Donatello, poke your kids, eye, your friend's eye out. Yeah, that kind of that kind of skewers that argument immediately, doesn't it? <laughs> Just a smidgen. All right, that brings us to our last question. 
which as always concerns real life skills. Private browsing, sometimes called incognito mode, is useful when surfing, surfing the web in secret. When this feature is activated on your browser, you can visit websites without them being able to track you and your search and Billy. Um, actually they can still track you. Your website information won't be saved. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, private browsing does not stop websites from tracking you. However, some browsers do have separate features to prevent tracking. So yeah, that's the end of our game. Uh, Tiffany, could you fill us in with the score? Sure. Uh, Billy, you have one TJ three. Baron, you're at six. Uh, Looks like our guildmaster really ran away with this one. Again. <laughs> Do our points carry on over to the next game? They don't. You they better don't. hope not. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> if, if you want to come back Two another time to try to take on Guildmaster Baron, you are welcome to do so, who still remains undefeated. Uh, I'll hail the champ. I thought I thought this was I thought this was it. I thought I was gonna get that handed off today. <sighs> So thank you so much for joining us, uh, Billy. If anybody liked your gameplay and want to find wants to find you anywhere there on the internet, is there anywhere they can do that? Uh, yes, you can find me at most places at six at Billy. One word, no space. TJ, if anybody wants to find you on the internet, is there anywhere they can do that? Uh, yeah, you can check me out on my YouTube page at uh, Night of Shaddai. Uh, Night is in Night of Shining Armor. Uh, Shaddai, S H A D D A I. Uh, I do various streaming with my family uh, for charity off and on uh, and uh, play pretty much anything that catches my fancy. So, uh, yeah, feel free to check me out over there. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you also to T-Villain for, for providing awesome shirts and Geeky Clean for providing awesome bath products. You can find links to both of them and all the links to our players in the description. Please email us at casterskill.gmail.com if you'd like a chance to take on our guild master if you think you can finally dethrone him and come join us on the Discord. That is where all the fun stuff is happening. Thank you for tuning into this episode and bye bye, everybody. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. Bye. Why is everybody waiting?